Well, I suppose these few words are going to be about the life and times of Ken Unsworth, who's doing an exhibition called Truly Madly. And it actually encapsulates his life and work. My adopted father uh, didn't know what to do with me when I finished high school. He suddenly had this brainwave. Oh, well, he was good at drawing, so he organised me to do architecture at the Gordon Institute of Technology in, in Geelong. And if you can imagine in the 40s, the late 40s when I was there, with returned soldiers and all the rest of it, architecture was so boring. After two and a half years in my third year, I just sort of walked out and um, went to work as a spot welder at Ford Geelong plant. My adopted father was in Hamilton. I'd been very friendly with the local music shop and the, uh, the two guys who owned it. And I could hear a piano being played downstairs. And I said, oh, what's going on? And they said, um, oh, there's a, a piano lesson going on there. And there was this absolutely gorgeous woman, long black hair, black silk stockings, high heel shoes. And she looked round and she looked at me and then this accent, she said, yes. And I said, do you mind if I sit in on, on the lesson? And she said to me, what do you do? And instead of saying, I'm an art teacher, I said, I'm an artist. She said, well, I'd like to see some of your work. So I scuttled back to Dimboola and I pinched some of the art department paper and, and watercolours and brush. And I went out into the Wimmera and did, did these appalling landscapes to bring back to Hamilton to show her. From then on, we were inseparable. A few years later, when we were in Bathurst, I was doing all these paintings. And one day she said to me, do you realise you're painting objects? Said, yes, you know, biomorphic things, you know, suggestive of the body and things like that. And um, she said, why don't you make them instead of painting them? So that's when I made my first sculpture, Kinky Bird in the Drawing Room. Some artists are driven by a point of view or a philosophy or a, uh, an obsession with certain sort of issues and I do things that come out of me and if I can grab hold of it and make it a reality in some way or realise it in some way, that's, that's my modus operandi. You know, an idea might come to my head and I draw it, but then I draw all sorts of variations the one idea has all sorts of possibilities surrounding it. So the original idea was a hundred of these body casts of me uh, standing in serried rows like the Chinese warriors and they're all shaking. But I couldn't do it down there in Melbourne. So the one that they did do just has this, the one figure that's shaking and surrounded by blown glass forms. I'm not there to tell people what to think or what to do or to create a message for them. If it has the opportunity of being put before the public and they have a good reaction to it, well, that's great. But it's not done specifically for that. Which is one of the reasons why I have humour in a lot of my work. If you lighten those more serious or more profound aspects of life, if you lighten it a bit, then it gives people the opportunity of being able to connect with it. In any artist's development, certain things emerge and uh, accompany the artist throughout their working life. One of those is, uh, it comes out of an experience that I had in New York of discovering Art Povera or Bar Povera. Uh, where artists were working with natural materials. I started deliberately using natural materials, uh, you know, like river stones and, and uh, thorns and all sorts of things. Um, and then suddenly I realised that the human body was a, a natural element. And so I started using my own body in work. I, I make work because that's something I want to do, I want to make it. You know, I have all these flights of fancy and imaginings and I want to do them and achieve them and then have the, the opportunity of putting them before the public. <laughs>